Lecture 10.5, Tangents to Circles. Um, in this circle, we need to identify the center, the radius, and the diameter. We look, the center is at P. Um, one of the three radii would be PR, PS, or PT. And the only diameter shown is TR, because that is our chord going through the center. So we have center P. Radius PS is one of our three radii. And one diameter that they show, the only diameter they show, is TR. Chords, secants, and tangents. We already know about chords. Chords are any segment where both endpoints are on the circle. So looking, we have chord TS, chord QW, and that's all that they show us. Uh, secants. A secant is very similar to a chord. Uh, it is a line that intersects a circle in two places. So we have a line QW would be a secant line. And then tangents. A tangent is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. So the only line that intersects a circle at one point right now is line R. And it, it intersects at that, that point uh, right above the R. All right, labeling a circle and its intersecting lines. The diameter, or a diameter, that we see. We see AD is the only segment that is going through the center. Tangent line, what is a line that is intersecting the circle at one place. We have GE, line GE, we could call it line GF or line FE, but either way it's intersecting at just point F there. Uh, what secant lines do we see? So basically with secant lines we're looking for chords and making sure that they, they uh, continue on forever. So we have uh, BH or BK, BG, the vertical secant line here, or we could also have AD as a secant line. Radii. The first radii I see is CF. We also have CD and CA. And then chords. Uh, chords, again, are segments that intersect the circle at two places. So we have BH and AD. Circle intersections. Circles can intersect each other at two points. One point, or they may not intersect at all. If they intersect at two points, they're going to kind of look like a Venn diagram. One point, uh, they intersect uh, just at one point, similar to a tangent line. You see a tangent line there. Or no points at all. Concentric circles will not intersect at all, but there are other ways for circles to not intersect other than being concentric circles. A common tangent line is a line tangent to two or more circles. We can have internal internal intersections of tangent lines. Uh, we see here they intersect uh, inside the two circles or external intersections. Uh, these Two tangent lines are going to intersect somewhere off to the right beyond the two circles. Um, one thing about common tangent lines, a, if a circle intersects at two, if the circles intersect each other at two places, there will be two common tangent lines. They will both be external. If they are, if they intersect at one point, they will have two external common tangent lines and one internal common tangent line. And if they don't intersect at all, as you see here, they can have up to four common tangent lines. So finding common tangent lines, we need to copy the figure and draw the common tangents to determine how many there are. If no common tangents exist, choose no common tangents. So we look, this is our example where two circles are not intersecting each other at all. Um, so we know we can have the two 
internal common tangent lines, and we can also have the two external common tangent lines, so we have four common tangents. Same thing here, how many common tangents are we going to have? They intersect at exactly one place, so we know we're still going to have our two common external tangent lines, and there's going to be one inside the circle. Since they intersect at exactly one point, you can have a tangent line through that one point, so we're going to have three common tangents, as shown there. If M is tangent to circle Q at P, then M is perpendicular to QP. If M is perpendicular to QP, then M is tangent to circle Q at P. These are our tangent line theorems. So we know if QP M is going to be a right angle, then P then line M is going to be a tangent line. And that goes the other way as well. If line M is a tangent line, that angle uh, of the intersection between the radius and the point of tangency must be a right angle. We can use that to help us verify that a tangent is uh, exactly a tangent. It's perpendicular to our circle. So if uh, DE and CE are going to be perpendicular to each other, then this is going to have to be a right triangle, and EDC must be a right triangle. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we know 11 squared plus 43 squared needs to equal 45 squared if this is going to be perpendicular. But 11 squared plus 43 squared is going to be 1970, or 1970. And 45 squared is 2,025. So those are not equal to each other. Therefore, this uh, CE is not perpendicular to circle D. And therefore, it's not a tangent line. If XY is a radius of circle X, determine whether YZ is a tangent to circle X. Same type of problem. We have a triangle. The only way that YZ is going to be tangent is if angle XYZ is a right angle. So we just use our Pythagorean theorem. Does 14 squared plus 16 squared equal 21 squared? Is that a true statement? We know 14 squared is 196 plus 16 squared is 256. Does that equal 21 squared, which is 441? So does 196 plus 256 equal to 441? And that would equal 452. So these are not equal. So we know YZ is not tangent to circle X. We can use that theorem in the other way as well to find the radius uh, to make sure, or given that CB is tangent to circle A, we're able to find the radius of A because we know uh, AB must be perpendicular to BC, so that needs to be a right triangle. So then we know our two legs, R, R squared and 28 squared, are going to have to equal the hypotenuse squared. AC, but we know AC from A to the circle is R. From the intersection of the circle to C is going to be 14. So AC is going to be R plus 14. So when we plug that into our Pythagorean theorem, we're actually going to have 28 squared plus R squared equals R plus 14 squared. So then 784 plus R squared is going to equal R squared plus 28R plus 196. We need to remember when we see R plus 14 squared, that that is not just a distribu distribution of that squared. This is two uh, equal binomials being multiplied together. This is r plus 14 times r plus 14. 
So we need to FOIL that out. Uh, so that's going to end up being r squared plus 28r plus 196. Then we combine our like terms. Lucky for us, our r squareds are going to cancel out when we subtract one from the other. So 784 is going to equal 28r plus 196. So 588 is going to equal 28r. Dividing by 28, r is going to equal 21. We're looking for the radius. And we see ab was equal to r, which is our radius. So r our radius is 21. In the figure, we are told IK is tangent to circle J at K. We need to find the value of X. We know, since IK is tangent to circle J, that the angle at K is a right angle. Since it's a right angle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this triangle. So we know our two legs, JK and ik squared are going to equal ij squared. So x squared plus 16 squared is going to equal x plus 8 squared because all of ij is going to be x plus 8. So x squared plus 256 is going to equal x squared plus 16x plus 64. Combine our like terms when we subtract x squared from both sides. That's going to cancel. And we subtract off the 64, so 192 is going to equal 16x. Divide that by 16, x is going to equal 12. And that's going to be answer D. Bingo. More tangent theorems if line SR and line ST are tangent to circle P, then the segments SR and ST are congruent. So tangent segments are going to be congruent at the common point of intersection. We can use that to help us solve some problems. If AD and AB are tangent lines to circle C. Find X. Well, we know that uh, since these are two tangent lines, the two segments from the common intersection point, which would be A, are going to be equal to each other, or congruent. So AD is going to equal AB. So X squared plus 2 is going to equal 11. So X squared equals 9. We take the square root of both sides. When we square root both sides, we need to take into account both the positive and the negative. So x is going to equal plus or minus 3. If we plugged in negative 3, negative 3 squared is still 9. That's why we need to uh, take both the positive and the negative. We can use the same uh, logic here. If m and n, or if mn and mp are tangent to circle q, find the value of x. If they're tangent to each other, uh, we know the segments from the intersecting point. So from M to N, from M to P are going to be equal to each other. So we just set their lengths equal to each other. 5x plus 4 is going to equal 8x minus 17. Combining like terms, 21 is going to equal 3x. So 7 is going to equal x which would be answer C. This concludes lecture 10.5.